Hey guys, Mike Perlman here for Techno Buffalo, and today I'm reviewing a piece of photographic history. This is the Lytro Light Field Camera. Will the Lytro succeed in lighting your fire, or is it merely a spark in the incendiary blaze to come? Find out in my full review. The Lytro camera is the most groundbreaking piece of photographic equipment ever to hit the photography market since the digital camera, maybe even since the camera. The Lytro utilizes a type of technology called light field technology, which essentially enables you to capture a picture and focus after the fact. Lytro's model has exceedingly simplified camera controls and a very unconventional design. We'll get more into light field technology down the road in this review, but for now let's start with design. Aesthetically, the Lytro camera is one of the most peculiar camera designs I've ever seen. It looks like a lipstick case got it on with a slide viewer. It's one of the highest quality constructions I've ever seen from a digital camera, particularly the anodized aluminum body and nice rubberized grip areas. Lytro also opted for real glass on the back with the 1.52 inch LCD display. Even the lens cover is fancy with a magnetic squarish design that fits right over the top for a flush look. However, given its magnetic design, the lens cover was always falling off anytime I put it in a bag or a pocket. I think Lytro should have put a little tether here and they should have also put a magnetic strip on the bottom of the body so the lens cover could flip and kind of land like that. Now external controls are few and far between on the Lytro. We just have this recessed area here that serves as the shutter button. We've also got a touch sensitive slide zoom toggle and this is capacitive so it picks up on your electricity. On the bottom of the camera there's a power button and the only port we have is a USB terminal. Now you'll notice the omission of an SD card slot. That's because these cameras only record images to internal flash memory. There's an 8 gigabyte model for $400 and a 16 gigabyte model for $500. The Lytro has a nice bright f2.0 lens with an 8x optical zoom. And the cool thing about this lens is that the aperture stays constant throughout the entire zoom range. Now the LCD screen on the Lytro is puny and will really only be ideal for elves or fairies. One thing about the zoom strip is that it's positioned too closely to the shutter button. I found myself inadvertently toggling the zoom while I was having my finger over the shutter button, so that really hampered my experience. I had to change how I held the camera. So overall, we have unconventional technology housed in an unconventional design. Usually in the features section, I have a lot to talk about, but not in this case. The Lytro really only has touch auto exposure. That's it. That's really it. There's also this creative mode where you can tap on the screen to kind of set your focus range, but I really rarely ever use that. All you really do is just fire this camera on and take a shot. And since there's no AF motor or sensor, um, this camera has no shutter lag and it powers on within a second. So those are giant bonuses. However, I didn't have shutter speed, I didn't have aperture, I didn't have um, ISO settings, I didn't have white balance, although the auto white balance performed very well. Now one thing to note about the touch auto exposure, since the screen is so tiny, it was very difficult to fine tune and tap the exact desired spot that I wanted exposed. Really, the menu only offered me things like battery stamina, storage capacity, and firmware information. Now playback was very similar to an iPhone. All I had to do was swipe to the right while I was in live camera mode and it brought up the playback mode, all of my pictures that I took. And I could zoom out so I could display up to nine thumbnails on a screen at a time and scroll over. I could favorite and I could delete. Um, but really that's about it. I thought I've seen some pretty dumbed down point and shoots over the years, but the Lytro is about as idiot proof as you can get. Now it's time for the most important part of this review, the Lytro's image quality. And we'll start out by talking about the light field technology. This camera is equipped with a point and shoot size light field sensor, and it captures 11 million mega rays per image. Most cameras record 2D light rays, light rays that are directing and bouncing right off of the objects into the camera, and they record a 2D image. Light field technology deals with all of the available rays in the vicinity. So you're getting three-dimensional light rays at every different level in the image. Because of that, you're able to refocus images after the fact. This is an awesome, groundbreaking technology that will only be developed and improved as time goes on. While this technology is the most exciting thing that's happened since the invention of the camera, 
I feel that the Lytro really misses the mark in the image quality department. First off, your images can only be captured in a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So everything's gonna look like a big square. Also, I detected noise in almost every one of my images. In the bright shots, the noise was very fine, but still detectable. In low light, this camera's sensitivity was wonderful, but the noise was just a giant party. And many of my low light shots were unusable because of that. The Lytro suffered in the dynamic range department as well. With the auto exposure, I could subdue blown highlights at the sacrifice of really darkening my shadows, or I could brighten my shadows and have the highlights just explode with white. So overall, I expected a lot more from the Lytro when it came to image quality. Now it's time for the Buffalo Call with the Lytro. This is a revolutionary technology that has unprecedented potential. But for now, my suggestion is to be a spectator in the arena of light field technology. For the entire Lytro review with a lot more analysis and tons of image samples, in addition to a link, to my Lytro page with all of the images I've taken, go to technobuffalo.com. I'm Mike Perlman for Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you guys and refocus you later.